To determine the molecular geometry for SCN minus, we'll start by looking at the Lewis structure. We can see that the central carbon there has a sulfur on one side and a nitrogen on another. There are also no lone pair or unbonded pairs of electrons on the carbon. So in accordance with valence shell electron pair repulsion theory, that means that those atoms, that sulfur and that nitrogen, are going to be as far away from each other as they can possibly be. And it would make sense that they're on the end of the molecule there. That would mean that it's probably going to be in a straight line or a linear molecule. We can check that out by looking at the AXN notation just to be sure. A, that's the central carbon. X, that's the number of atoms bonded to the carbon. We have the sulfur and the nitrogen, so we only have two atoms bonded to that central carbon. And N, that's the number of lone pair electrons on that central atom. Well, all of the electrons are involved in those double bonds there on the sulfur and the nitrogen, so we can just ignore N. So you could have memorized that AX2 is indeed a linear molecule. Or you could look it up on a table if you had one available. So looking down our table, AX2, that's the first one on it. It is linear, and the bond angle is 180 degrees. So the molecular geometry for SCN minus is linear, and the bond angle is going to be 180 degrees. And that makes sense because it's in a straight line. If we looked at that in three dimensions, it would look like this. Here we have our sulfur, in the center our carbon, and on the end our nitrogen. And you can see that it's in a straight line, so the bond angle would be 180 degrees. This is Dr. B with the molecular geometry or shape for SCN minus, and thanks for watching.